Hello everybody and welcome back to Analog Vernacular. Today we're going to be playing some more Rogue Trader and um Rise to the top. We'll get left We did in the, the fight dust. in here. And now we just need to get to the other side in one piece. Okay, the there we go. Made? I I did it. These dead heretics are suspiciously different from the others. The symbols on their clothes are drawn wrongly, and standard issue military uniforms show through the blasphemous tatters. Interesting. Okay. Operation successful. The bodies of careless cultists have been thoroughly fried by an arc of the motive force. Let us not dawdle. Is the motive force just a name for like a generator or like a power source or something? Ha! Oh, cool. Hey, great. That that's fantastic. Um, that's a tech priest. The crowd of cultists have surrounded a tech priest. Crucified upon a mechanism, a rhythm whisper repeated by a hundred voices blends into some blasphemous enchantment. Powerful discharges of the motive force run through the machine, causing the unfortunate prisoner's body to convulse brutally and forcing woeful cries of pain from his lips. Dude's still alive? I'm impressed. Okay. Tech priest's horse voice echoes under the ceiling. In the clenched claws of stagnation, in the shackles of iteration zero, under the iron wing, let the cycle be continued. Pascal's mechanendrites spring into combat mode instantly, and a wrathful rattle comes from his vox. I am registering a severe violation of the purity protocol. The blessed Amarnat has been captured by heretics and is being tortured. Look around the hall. The heretics have taken up positions everywhere, and many more are doubtlessly hiding in the passages leading out of the hall. For now, they are all focused on the sacrilegious torture of the tech priest, and do not notice you. We must save the esteemed tech priest without risking his life. The mechanendrite points to the corpses of heretics lying nearby. We can use the blasphemer's clothing as a disguise. Unrecognized, we can sabotage the power unit, overloading them, and thus cleansing the hall of heretics. Ooh, I like this. Okay. Sabotage the power units. Okay. The lightning discharges have charred the cultist corpses. Whiffs of smoke rise from their empty eye sockets, whose contents have evaporated. Their clothes, covered in the blood of innocents, are crudely painted over with emblems of the arch enemy, which exude a repulsive air of sour, de sour decay. Oh, I shudder with disgust at the mere thought of having to touch clothing adorned with unholy symbols, let alone wear it. This is the first step towards falling a small... Falling, a small compromise with evil that will lead to something greater. Is there truly no other way, Rogue Trader? Come on. Argenta, like, tough it up for, like, one second. The signs of the arch enemy are not just painted symbols, but conductors of its will. The words of their prayers, even spoken without faith. Their coats of arms, even deceitfully worn. All this increases the presence of ruinous powers. Near you, uh... All of this increases the presence of the ruinous powers near you and draws their corrupting attention to you. Cassius stares in horror at the corrupted clothes and the scattered human ashes. D -d do not make me. All right, like literally everybody doesn't want to do this, so. I don't know if I can make them do this. This might be the only way to save this person's life, though. But, like, everybody in our party is going to hate it. What is the essence of your plan? Uttering a litany of actuation for the power units from the... Lumino Deacon's command throne will direct the motive force created by the Blessed Reactor into the hall. The distribution servitor is keeping its output within the set parameters, but upon receiving an order to increase its peak values, it will turn this place into an electric trap.
The safety system protecting the hall is controlled from the machine altar, which must be disabled. If all these operations are performed, I can guarantee that not a single blasphemer will survive the Omnissiah's wrath that will be unleashed upon this place. Yeah, but... and, and it won't hurt your buddy? <laughs> okay. You do realize this plan sounds like suicide. A sound similar to a laugh escapes Pascal's Vox. This statement is true. Then what do you propose? To flee? I have tried to employ this behavioral strategy in the past and it brought my soul no relief. So would you disgrace yourself by donning these tainted rags? He deadpans. The only unbearable disgrace is that of a duty unfulfilled. The rest is merely spiritual attrition. Oh man. If it helps to save a worthy man, I will put on the cultist's robes. I pray that the Omnissiah gives the blessed Amarnat enough fortitude. Pascal grimaces as a new well of pain rends the air. Okay, we're doing it. Our party may not like it, but we're doing it. The heretic's garb clings to your skin like a greedy leech, tingling and foul. Fever spread over your body. A tingling and foul fever spreads over your body, as though these tatters have imbibed the vile contents of their former wearer's soul. Now, is that in our head, or is that real? <laughs> Shit. <laughs> there actually might be truth to it. There might actually be a little bit of truth to the fact that um, it does bring us closer to the chaos. Okay, it did it in an order. Lumino Deacon's Command Throne. A grim-looking heretic walks up to you resolutely blocking your path as he studies your disguise with suspicion. You note that his left eye has two conjoined irises, while his right eye has four. I don't know you. Who are you and why haven't I met you before? Okay, we have to remember that just because it has a check doesn't mean it's guaranteed to get us what we want, so to speak. So in other words, we need to pick an option that both maintains our disguise in some way, and also that we can actually roll and succeed on. Okay. Blinded your eyes through the warp stuff. Coercion. What's with all the questions? So that one might work. It's 100% for us. I don't like that one as much. Coercion feels more in line with these people. <laughs> that will just lead to a fight. I don't know you either, you know. What's with all the questions? Are you the governor's spy? The cult is taken aback and staggers backward a little. Fear flashes in his mutated eyes. Ah, uh, to the abyss with you. Go on your merry way, brother. The command throne is not yet ready for the power unit litany. Okay, so it didn't show us in the order that we needed to do it in. Distributor servitor. A heavy crown of golden earl augmetics Ag rests upon the servitor's head. The crown is bent and broken from ruthless gun butt blows. The pale body is covered in blasphemous inscriptions carved into the withered flesh. I identify this acolyte as a distribution servitor. I am registering upon it traces of sacrilegious violation of the right of operation. The probability of its responsiveness to commands is below average. Okay. A restart. We can also use coercion. Let's do the tech use. Try to conduct a restart ceremony. For the glory of the Omnissiah, let this machine spirit sleep, that it may awaken and serve again. Pascal gently touches the servitor's crown, deactivating one of its segments. Let the outer neural connection circuit be plunged in darkness. Another touch and several lights on the crown go out. Let the command response hubs uh, let the command response hub fall silent. Pascal switches to Beneric speech, accompanying his every action with a line from a sacred hymn. It is amazing how the reverent awe in the tech priest's voice can be discerned even through his rattling box. Suddenly every light in the servitor's crown comes alive. A shower of sparks burst from the augmentics on the servitor's brow and several black ash-tinted tears run from its empty so eye sockets. Ready to serve. 
Energize the hull's power units to the maximum. It will be done. Okay? Okay. I always keep my options open. The altar is adorned with gilded skulls. Threads of metal that used to be electus are fused onto the bone. Once majestic, the altar has now been desecrated with blasphemous images of blue screen blue-green suns. Some of its levers and buttons have been pried from their sockets, but the mechanism still glorifies the Omnissiah with its operation. I identify this as the safety system control altar. For our diversion to succeed, this blessed machine must be executed, and may its spirit forgive us. Okay. Forgive us, honored machine spirit, we are obliged to interrupt your work. A mournful, Beneric requiem pours forth from Pascal's Vox. Cause the altar to overload. 100%. Pascal offers a short Beneric prayer, then enters command after command to set up a trap for the machine spirit inhabiting the altar. The code born out of the tech priest tinkering causes the spirit to flutter confusedly in a snare of impossible commands, heat up the altar circuit boards, and perish forever in the showers of sparks that burst forth from the melting wires. May we be granted the Omnicide's forgiveness for this act. I am registering a general shutdown of the security system. I always have a backup plan. <laughs> A tech priest corpse, his throat slit, sits upon a splendid command throne laced with finely wrought motive force paths. A contorted expression of righteous anger is frozen on his face. A black blindfold covers his eyes. This is the Lumino Deacon's command throne. This is where the power unit actuation and shutdown litanies are recited from. The blessed Lumino Deacon himself has the honor of closing the circuit. The motive force flows through. Okay. 75. Let's see. Uh, who has better toughness? Can I actually check that right now? I can't. So I can only see mine, and we only have a 75% chance. I would love to know what his toughness is. Um, in case there's a tech check, I think Pascal has to do this, but I don't know. Maybe that doesn't matter. Pascal, kindly sit down on the throne and recite the litany. Pascal freezes, and a quiet whisper comes from his box. Request denied. I am not authorized to sit upon the Lumino Deacon's command throne. Such an act would be considered a sacrilege. Okay. We'll do it then. Okay, 75%, it's not guaranteed. Sit down upon the throne and recite the litany of actuation. I'm about to be greatly honored or else thoroughly charred. Maybe both. Good luck me. 75% is certainly no guaranteed, but we got it, okay. As soon as you lay your hands on the command throne's panels, a painful sting of electricity numbs your senses for an instant. Your fingers cramp and your vision grows dim. Pain is visible in the tech priest's eyes as he looks upon the sacrilege. Forgive us, Omnissiah, for such a gross violation of the right of operation. Repeat the litany after me and activate the command runes I point to. Pascal's Vox starts reciting the sacred words gloomily and hoarsely. Damage taken, 11. <laughs> Clinging on to the blazing shreds of your fading consciousness, you repeat the words of the litany after Pascal and touch the command runes as the unabating lightning rips through your muscles and makes your bones crackle. I am recording a successful activation of the power units. We did it. Oh my god. So our alternative was literally fighting all of those guys? That was a lot of people. Okay. <laughs> Look at all that. They all died. 126 experience, and then another 308 experience. And a level up, of course. Brilliant.
Brilliant. Give me all the cargo, baby. Wow, that's a lot of stuff. Okay, did we get it all? Not quite. Keep your eye on the price. Okay, that door opened. Okay, sorry for literally leaving you hanging. In the cycles of the foreordained, there lurks a flaw of worship. The tech priest's body convulses, pained, plaintive creaks of Beneric prayers. Pained, plaintive creaks of Beneric prayers come from his vox. As moments pass, the signal becomes less and less clear, as if something twisted and wrong were being added to it. Pascal studies the tech priest's face carefully. His Vox system moans in a tragic vibrato. Subject unidentified. This is not the blessed Amarnath. Stranger, I request your name. How do you know my mentor's motto? Examine the tech priest. There are deep burns all over his flesh, and the skin around his augmetics is charred. Blasphemous spells have been carved into his sacred iron, forming unholy litanies of scrap code. It is amazing how robust this tech priest's life support system have proven to be in maintaining the spark of life in his grievously wounded body. Who are you, servant of the Yom Nisiah? The fire of the hearth has sent forth sparks. The name of his spark is Abel Hanoiman. The tech priest looks over at Pascal. For a brief moment, his speech becomes clear. The echo of my call has reached you. Good. The iteration is at its end. The design is fulfilled. What is the intention? Why are you calling yourself by my name? Was it you who summoned me to Rykad Menoris? What for? I categorically demand an answer. Pascal's voice rises to an intimidating howl, but the delirious tech priest does not seem to understand what he is saying. What design? An intention both bold and honorable to open new gates for the waters of knowledge and comprehension, a plan written so that the righteous may follow, and trust in the great pattern of revelation and uniform progression towards it. Pascal's voice is trembling with elation. Those are his words. I have not heard them in so very long. Ask him about Amarnat. You came here because of him, after all. No, Tech Priest's weak voice grows stronger. He came because of himself. Myself. To redeem myself. To correct a mistake. Possibly. But how do you... There's a look of gentle condescension in Abel's eyes. Strange given the circumstances. The hubris of the mind spurs him to build monuments to himself. Do not regret, for all is predetermined by the iteration. A devastating coughing fit cuts him off, and you hear a clang of tearing, tearing metal from inside his chest. You can talk once we get him out of here. A cold premonition rakes the heart. The probabilities are dark and frightening. Brother... I do not wish to gaze into them. We are the flame of knowledge that drives the darkness away. Pascal is quickly inspecting Abel's wounds, paying no mind to the blood and sacred unjuance, staining his sleep. His box rasps soothingly. Do not fear what is to come, brother. We are already here. Do you know him, Pascal? The subject has not been identified and has no record in my catalog. Interrogation is impossible due to the subject's evident effective state of clouded consciousness. Okay, try to take down the tech priests crucified the tech priest crucified on the machine. 
As soon as you touch the tech priest's battered flesh, he shifts his gaze to you and says with sudden clarity, Many sparks have gone out, but not all. The electric shepherds are alive. In the darkness, I heard their prayers. Find them, save them, recite the hymn of contact circuit restoration so that you may behold what is hidden. A blast of motive force runs down the tech priest's body and his face contorts into a mocking grimace. Malformed Benaric code, repulsively jarring on the ears, pours out of his vox. Information archives to the effect that the circuit restoration hymns is the entrance password to the Electro Priest hiding place. Escal responds with the dour rhythms of a containment aria. I note with great sorrow that the cultist ritual has been partially successful. My tech brother has been tainted by corruption. He is in the grip of a schismatical, an unholy imitation of a machine spirit. I request immediate activation of the Texorcism protocol. Okay. What is a schismatical? An ugly mockery of a noble machine spirit created by the warp. Sometimes a few lines of a despicable scrap code or a small clump of the motive force falls under the arch enemy's influence and degenerates into an abomination of this sort. One whose very existence is an insult to the Omnissiah's wisdom. I think we're going to go dogmatic on this one. Grant the Emperor's peace to the Tech Priest. Ugh. I want to, I want to keep getting points in Icono though. I shall help save him. The possessed man responds with a burst of repulsive laughter. Every now and then, a word or two of Gothic finds its way into the Benaric obscenities pouring out of his box, in what seems to be the schismatical's tentative forays into a language that is alien to it. His body convulses, his joints twist at unnatural angles with the sound of bursting steel couplings. As the possessed man thrashes about, his internal augmetics emerge gradually through the hanging tatters of his flesh, as though an iron homunculus hidden inside the tech priest were trying to cast off the meat cocoon it no longer needed. That sounds absolutely horrifying. Pascal's mechadendrite extends a thin, drilling needle, sacred unguent glistens on it. A code purification aria is heard as the needle sinks into the possessed tech priest's skull and touches his neural augmetic, forming an electric circuit with it. Extreme strain is visible on his face. Furious litanies pour out of his vox. Result, failure, requesting assistance. Okay. All right, tech use. Send a purifying charge of the motive force into the possessed man's body. May the machine god heal you. Undaunted, you grab one of the severed cables and press it into the tech priest's body, and a shock of formidable power shakes the possessed man. Machine oil gushes out of his mouth. His vox hisses deafeningly, as the flow of the motive force burns the corruption in his sacred iron. The overload destroys some of the circuit boards of his neural augmetic, resets his code, and erases the schismatical from existence. <laughs> that sounded brutal. The tech priest's eyes roll up and he loses consciousness. Crushed, yet still alive and no longer in the thrall of corruption. With the utmost care, Pascal takes his body down from the mechanism and lays it on the floor. His stirring litanies of gratitude to the Omnissiah echo through the hall. Rest, tech brother. We will come back for you and we have done our duty to the miraculous fusion reactor. Lord Captain, the Omnissiah commands a pious mind to strive towards uncovering the truth. Therefore, I will not stop until I find my mentor and understand his connection to the servant of the Machine God. I request the privilege of joining your retinue as a rightful companion. I can offer to fulfill the duties of an engine seer on your ship in exchange for the right to follow you and conduct my own investigation. Items received. Comma, comma. Oh, good. I love those items. Thank you. Despite all the suffering he has endured, the tech priest is still alive, though unconscious. Argenta, guide my strikes true against the heretics who have encroached upon these halls. Let not one villain escape the God Emperor's retribution delivered by our hands. So was one of the things that he was reciting, giving us access to this, 
Your hues are so vivid, Sister Argenta. The hatred that fuels your words and impulses burns like a supernova. There money to be made. The machine altar accepts the contact circuit restoration hymn. Something something went too fast. Let us read not it. With a deferential word. Oh, hi guys. You shouldn't have attacked me out there. I could have been your friend, bro. The Dar Impulse 6, a shortish muscular man wearing the scarlet colors of the Priesthood of Mars, steps into your path. The wrinkles on his cheeks and forehead point to his propensity for frequent outbursts of fierce anger. But right now, he is showing no signs of aggression. Glowing blue patterns of electric tattoos or electus show through his oddly bluish tinted skin. The man's eye sockets are dark and empty, yet he turns his face straight towards you with no hesitation. He has a sharp, screeching voice, not unlike a bird's cawing. May the charge of the Omnissiah's mercy persist in the hands of the faithful. May the motive force persist in their batteries. Make the sign of Akula, the Emperor protects. The man responds curtly as if giving a military command. The Omnissiah knows all, comprehends all. The hallowed electrodynamic Synobium receives you, Pilgrim. I am Dar Impulse VI, a servant of the Motive Force and the Praetor Electroid of the Sacred Monastery. Pascal bows down humbly before the man. A trail of Benaric signals comes from his vox, to which the Praetor responds with a solemn gesture of blessing. Pascal returns to you and says, The rank of Praetor Electroid is a sign of high standing within the Electro Priest fraternity. To have been granted an audience is a great honor. Dar Impulse 6. It was to you, was it not, that Logis Abel came seeking an interpretation of his data trance? Yes, Tech Brother, Abel arrived here to engage in a magnetic me meditation that would help clarify his visions. Unfortunately, the heretic's machinations prevented us from completing the ritual. The esteemed Lodges volunteered his help in defending the monastery, but contact with him was lost soon afterward. Tell me more about Abel. We did not speak much to each other. He preferred to devote his time to solitary reflections in his chapel. The Omnissiah has given Tech Brother Abel a gift of great insight, which allows him to discern each individual facet of existence rather than the overall view. This makes the logic different from that of other people. His mind has always been able to combine facts and conclusions into harmo harmonious holes that were nothing short of beautiful. Many among my flock found his sermons poetic. What kinds of visions? The Omnissiah's revelation was encrypted with great meticulousness, which indicates its great importance. Grasping it fully is beyond my ability, but a single touch was enough for me to realize the enormity of the secret concealed within. Or more exactly, the secret design, which was how Tech Brother a Abel referred to it. His mind had discerned in the, in the world around him traces of some grand silence that he wished to comprehend. I have rescued him from the insurgents. I hope the Omnissiah preserved Tech Brother Abel's life that he may continue to comprehend the mysteries he has tapped into. Um, I have a few questions about this place. Truth is like light and blocking its path is criminal. The Praetor Electroid nods majestically. Who are you? The hardworking servants and dwellers of this Synobium, Electro Priests of the Adeptus Mechanicus. The Corpus Cur... The Corpus Curai did us a great honor by entrusting into our care the sacred relic around which the hallowed electro electrodynamic synobium was built. And what do you believe in? We have devoted ourselves to the worships of that aspect of the machine god, which is known as the mode of force. It is the blessed divine spark that creates impetus in the universe. The Omnissiah, in his mercy, gave the world the gift of the mode of force, and we follow its impulses in order to increase it, bring it to lay people, and protect it from unholy hands. 
The relic that this monastery protects provides the entire planet of Rykat Minoris with the blessed motive force, and we unworthy though we are, are glad to serve the ancient machine that dwells in this place. Tell me about your relic. It would be pointless to describe the miraculous fusion reactor, only through beholding its ferocious power can one comprehend its blessed essence, and fear the might of the Omnissaya. Its core was found 4,000 years ago and delivered to Rykad Minoris by the holy warrior of faith, Locke Impulse. I, during one of his campaigns. Impulse the first during one of his campaigns, gotcha. Its sacred spark has not gone out for an instant, and the walls and power units of the Synobium have been erected around the relic in order to protect it from ignorant laypeople as well as protect them from its formidable might. Pascal keeps his solemn silence, but the quick clicking of his mechandendrite claw betrays his excitement at being so close to the sacred Archaeotech. You are not like other members of the Adeptus. Our faith imposes a duty of obedience on us. Every Electro Priest is given numerous Electus that combine in a blessed Voltigeist circuit, allowing feeble flesh to withstand the might of the motive force. That is why our skin glows with its light, and our eyes boil and melt when we are ordained. So, like, it's... It's just, like... They're, they're under the effects of radiation. Like, this is a nuclear reactor. <laughs> the Omnissiah's Tears is what we call this phenomenon. This dying away of unworthy flesh, as we shun the layperson's primitive means of looking at the world, we gain the ability to sense the motive force around us with our entire bodies. I understand everything. I am pleased to be the conductor of truth. What a comment. I understand everything. <laughs> I do. I understand everything. I have no further questions. I know everything there is to learn. Why are you calling me a pilgrim? Only those lay people who desire to experience the motive force are allowed to cross this monastery's threshold. All others are profaners and criminals. You do not belong to the fraternity of Electro Priests, but your intentions are good. If you were not seeking the Omnissiah's wisdom, then it was the motive force itself that brought you here to find it. What happened here and how did you manage to survive? When the heretics descended in droves upon the Cenobium, we gave battle, but the unholy foes buried the Omnissiah's warriors under a mass of their bodies, thus extinguishing the Defender Spark's purity. It was then that I ordered my few surviving brethren to retreat into the monastery's secret chambers. Upon taking refuge there, we began to destroy the blasphemous intruders in surreptitious ways. Alas, as fiery as my brethren's anger was, I had no right to permit them to die in honest combat, for the task of taking back our abode still lay ahead of us. So this... The Emperor's people are way more dogmatic, whereas these people are like willing to do things if it... if it lends itself to reason and logic. It's kind of cool. I like it. So they're still, like, got their wild religion, but, like, they'll they'll bow to logic if it makes sense instead of, like, calling it heresy. I must commend the skill with which you your secret chambers are concealed. You hear a tinge of wounded pride in Heinrichs's uh, words as if he is upset about failing to discover the Electro Priest shelter. Your choice of tactics was wise as well. There was no point in losing more lives in the massacre than the cultists wrought. The leader of the heretics fought her way into the Ark wherein dwells the miraculous fusion reactor. She is trying to desecrate the rite of operation with her unholy litany so that the relic may be corrupted and the world of Rykad Minoris may perish in a fount of fire. But my brethren in their magnetic meditation are hampering her efforts by chanting access request prayers in unison, thereby suppressing the commands that the blasphemers enter. Praetor Electroid nods towards his entrance, entranced comrades. This holy place will be protected against sacrilegious practices, I swear it. Okay. And the dialogue continues even more. Oh man, we are going to lose our voice in this one. In the monastery, I was attacked by people who looked like Electro Priests. That is a lamentable mistake. We knew of no help that was on its way, and we're not expecting to encounter any allies in the monastery's chambers. But I see that you are alive, and I mourn the senseless deaths of my bre brethren. My enforcers and the governor's guards can help you reclaim the monastery. I cannot allow this. Lay people are forbidden from visiting the monastery, and only a secret select few are allowed to behold the Ark and the relic within. You and your retinue are pilgrims of a special status bestowed by the Emperor. 
However, should any soldier unblessed by the Omnissiah cross this monastery's threshold, I will deem them a heretic and have them put to death. Confirmed, the presence of lay people on monastery grounds without the Praetor Electroid's blessing would will be regarded as a sacrilegious violation of the holy rite of operation. Heinrichs opens his mouth for a second to say something, but changes his mind and quietly clears his throat instead. Sure, better to die protecting their lumens and coils than to accept help from unworthies, and we're left to deal with the mess as usual. Cassia nods thoughtfully. Yes, I see. Hasar Celio follows the same rules when it comes to outsiders. You made the right decision when you chose to avoid combat and save yourselves. Thank you, Pilgrim. It was not easy watching unholy intruders stampede through the chambers of my temple. We all envied our brethren who had fallen before that sacrilege began. I wish to get to the Holy Reactor. The Ark is hidden from Pilgrim's eyes, but considering the extraordinary cir circumstances of your visit to this monastery, I grant you that right. The hall that leads to the High Reliquary has been barred by the enemy, but I will open a secret path for you, enter the Ark, and experience the motive force, Pilgrim. We will pray to the security systems that they may refrain from punishing you for your intrusion. Okay. Whatever that is, we're not dogmatic enough. I must press on. May the charge of the Omnissiah's grace persist in the batteries of the faithful. Okay. Alright, so we have a level up. I also want to see if we can brute force whatever this is. Okay, Pilgrim, oh. Pilgrim, only the words of the first Galvanic hymn will reveal the, uh, to you the gifts hidden behind the veil of knowledge. Now chant with me, let us sing this canticle to probably the Omnissiah or the Motive Force. The Omnissiah from whom the Holy Discharge springeth forth. Let's go with that. Verse 2 calls to you, Pilgrim, let us fill our souls with gratitude towards... The hallowed contacts whose touch conducteth the current? Now finish this prayer, Pilgrim. May the unity of the sacred charges power. Probably something to do with reason. Or would they go with faith? I think it's one of these two. The immortal reason that hath created the spark. Only one who has learned the path of our synobium is worthy of its gifts. Walk the path of the enlightened, absorb their age-old wisdom, and sing with me again. Okay, so we didn't get it right. Okay. We haven't found anything to read, I so... I always keep my options open. We could try and just brute force that. It seems like we don't get locked out for getting it wrong, so... Um, we'll come back. Maybe in this next area we'll find more, um, materials for figuring this out. Um, okay. You are my healer now. Let's get rid of our injury. Bioreformation protocol. Boom. <sighs> I won't forget this. All right, we're almost maxed out here. Choose characteristic. Okay, so it's gotta be toughness or ballistic. I'm gonna take ballistic. Then we got a common talent.
That one probably is pretty good for us. Um, we should get some decent bonuses from that. So when an Imperial World character is affected by an ally's non-damaging ability, or affects an ally with such an ability, so whether I'm receiving a buff or giving a buff, the resolve is increased by fellowship bonus divided by two for one round. Okay. So that's an option. Perception or weapon skill. All right, so we just got you a weapon that was plasma, right? You were the only one who could use it. So the first attack in combat with any plasma, melt, or power weapon deals additional damage equal to 5. For the remainder of combat, the bonus damage is decreased. Okay. What does this do? Plasma weapon attacks gain plus two maximum damage. That one's probably better to start with, I'd say. Okay, we'll go strength. And we'll take strange vitality. When the Psyker's allies or the Psyker themselves are under the effects of the psychic powers, they gain plus five toughness for each of such effects. Okay, intelligence, weapon, ballistic. I guess it's intelligence then, huh? Okay. I almost want to get a bonus in one of these. Pain channeling could actually be very good. Whenever the Psyker kills an enemy with a psychic power dealing more damage than wounds of the target, the excess damage will be dealt to the enemy closest to the target. That's pretty cool. Alright, we only get a common talent, right? So we won't be able to get Trace the tra Trajectory. Ooh, honestly, we might not be able to get it at all. 
because the next level up is a special ability. We may not be able to get that talent. Hmm. Oh well. We'll see if it shows up in any of the other trees. It's... I guess, a, well, unless it has a different talent pool, but I don't know if it does. We'll just have to find out. I don't know how that works. Yeah. Can we even look at these? We can. Okay, I think... Play the bold. Yeah, I don't know. Some, some of these are the common. Where is it? Trace the trajectory. Is it in here? Might not be. Yeah, I'm not seeing it. Okay, we might not be able to do that. Maybe it also depends on which of these you pick, but... Let's not worry about it right now. Okay. Just to make sure, the trace thing should not be in the common list. Also, what's available here? Okay, we'll do demolition on that. Yeah, swift movements might be a good one here, or we could start leaning into a stat. I don't know, swift movements isn't as useful on you. Nimble might even be better. Just a 10% bonus to dodge. Get your dodge up to 100%. Devotee's Resolve is also permanently increased by, by their willpower bonus divided by two, so it just goes up by two? Okay. Let's do that. And we'll do... Oh, we can't do Demolition. We'll do Medicaid then. That would get you a bonus. Alright, we'll do toughness then. Okay, we'll get two bonuses, so toughness and willpower here. Okay, there we are. Okay, this is gonna be a big fight, I think. Are we gonna meet Aurora? Supposedly she's the one down here, right? The face of the woman who stands before you is hidden behind a grotesque barred mask, yet the voice pouring out beneath it belongs to someone else. It is the husky, somber base of a void wolf, a border of ships. How predictable your path is, how static, all the possible deaths you have skirted, only to perish here in the fiery tempest that will mark the final dawn. The woman turns her mask to Pascal and gloats. 
You've arrived just in time, little cog. The schismaticals use your regalia like a mask to subdue the reactor. Pascal's boss uh, rasps musingly. A cog. I cannot comprehend why apostates try to insult me by comparing me to the sacred symbol of our faith. It is irrational. His visor lights up like a crimson herald of bloodshed, and his drilling mechanendrite whirs viciously as it readies to strike. The sacred cog grinds all corruption to dust. From the dust, I will build order. Silence, heretic. Your crazed preaching will not touch my mind. Do you cling to your blindness so desperately? Do you think it will protect you from the blinding radiance of the truth? I think you're the one blinding people. The woman's voice breaks and shifts to a different pitch and timber. A martyr's voice, young, fervent, and in pain. Time has all but run out. I can hear the fist of the future knocking on the door of the present. Choose quickly what you want to be when it walks in. A blind slave to what is gone, a faithful servant of what is to come, or a corpse. I would take some time to rest from you the details of the future that the cult prophesies. Hopefully when we're done, what's left of you will still be able to coherent, be, be capable of coherent speech. What you'll be is a living torch blazing for his glory. Argenta's voice burns with pure hatred and trembles with impatience to make the promise come true. <laughs> ah. Cassius squints and looks away. Yellows, reds, violets, oranges, blues, wild colors that scorch the eyes. But where the motley mask ends, nothing but a colorless void remains. Who are you? My name is known to you. I am Aurora, servant of Urulon the Cruel. Okay, there's a name. Is that a known entity in this world to, to uh, people who know Warhammer? Is he like one of the chaotic gods or something? And the spark of the final dawn that is destined to set Rykad Menoris ablaze. A great path for one of one who was born into the Imperium's bondage, but shunned her pre predestination in favor of the changes promised by the edge of daybreak. Whose servant are you? Is Urulan a demon or just another heretic? Resounding laughter comes from behind the mask. Your flippancy is so amusing. While you have no inkling of the chasm that separates us, he is a prophet who foresaw our impending doom and who graciously bestowed upon us the right to choose a different path. He is a shard of ancient wisdom from a time before we were slaves to our bitter predestination. Rogue trader, I can't wait to close this creature's mouth with the seal of death. Or are you saving this glorious deed for yourself? The Edge of Daybreak, is that your unholy patron? Our teacher, our savior, our merciful god born in the Immaterium, out of the woes of those laboring under a legacy of ignorance and servitude. Okay, so we've got Urulan, who is considered a prophet, and then we've got the Edge of Daybreak, which is one of the chaotic gods. You cannot see the woman's face behind her mask, but judging by her tone of malicious triumph, you could swear she is smiling. And he remembers you, analog vernacular von Valencius. The silly savior fantasy you have been acting out amuses the true masters of those people's fates. What is this final dawn? Is... It is all your followers ever talk about. Oh, it's salvation from a death whose name is yet unknown, but whose approach is sensed by many. Soon it will claim every inhabitant of the Coronis Expanse. Do you think anyone will come to our aid when Cataclysm shakes our homes and planet-wide genocides are unleashed? Will the Emperor help? Or the Idol of Iron they call the Omnissiah? No. We will die alone and abandoned. Only one deity is promising salvation, the Edge of Daybreak. Mercy and salvation will come to all who believe in him and purify their souls in the light of the final dawn. What predestination? What servitude? Everyone born in the Imperium has a predestination. The soldier, the commoner, the administratum official, the technomat, the void rat. All are consigned to serving the Golden Throne and then dying a grim death for its glory. The Imperium never thinks twice about treating people as exploitable and expendable. After all, they are the most easily replenished of all resources. Even your path is predestined, rogue trader. You will inevitably perish on your quest to expand humanity's domain, and your end will be particularly grim and ghastly. The fruits of your efforts will be enjoyed by others, the eternal aristocrats who dwell on Mars, Terra, and other safe worlds. Yeah, that's kind of just how the universe works, I guess. They insist that it is the natural order of things, but that is a lie. It is an order that benefits them. 
Why are you blinding people? Do you think that they are blind? They see far more than you do. Through reflections and mirrors blessed by the energies of the immaterium, the edge of daybreak reveals to them visions of true existence and gives them glimpses of what is to come. The eyes lie. Our erstwhile masters have taught them to see only what is consistent with the lies they tell. The gift we give is that of true sight. The woman takes a glass prism out of the folds of her clothes and looks at you through it with a mocking chuckle. The prism's bluish pink sheen imprints itself on your retinas as though it has been burned into them. Guess what I see when I look at you? In that case, you should consider losing the eyes too, sister, because your visions are all wrong. My whispers are telling me something completely different about who dies here and how. I won't spoil the surprise, so let's just say, it will come as quite a shock to you. Adira grins maliciously. I think that is enough heretical talk. Argenta, attack. <laughs> just kidding. Apparently we have a whole bunch more here. Your people won in my head. Why? Brother Twilight, known to you as Conrad. Oh, we were right. He, that is Conrad. Marked you as a target. Your foiling of his plan sealed your death warrant. It is now a predestined certainty that changes can no longer affect. And are you trying to blow up this reactor? I am lighting the spark of the final dawn. Sometimes the future revealed in the edge of Daybreak's visions is fragmented. Between the facets of possibility and the view is unclear. I have glimpsed the importance of this place for what it for what is to come, and I have solved the puzzle. The flash of purity will transform this world and bring it closer to the immaterium, in which it will be born. False believers will perish in the fire, whilst the faithful will find their salvation and their new form in it. You will never tame the spirit of this ancient and noble machine, ignorant layperson. It does have a vile temper, but I have assistants who can help tame it. The woman nods casually towards the maimed electro priest, whose hands are affixed to the control panels with steel stakes. Wait, what am I looking at here? Oh, okay, there we go. One of the servants of the Omnissiah casts a tortured glance at you, his voice trembling with horror. Blasphemous spirits have crawled under our skin and into our sacred iron. Take the motive force of our bodies, I implore you. We do not wish to offend the Omnissiah with the sacrileges our hands are committing. They resisted for a long time, but now their bodies and souls belong to the schismaticals. Line after line, the scrap code they produce will awaken the reactor's unyielding spirit as well. And it too will yearn for change and freedom. All right. Enough, I will rid Rykan Minoris of your tyranny. The woman's voice becomes thin and brittle, like that of an innocent child. Execute them in the name of the Edge of Daybreak. The Electro Priests rip their hands off the command panels, rending their flesh on the stakes that pierce them, as their schismatical controlled bodies are imbued with the mode of force radiance. Forces radiance, all the unfortunates can do is scream in horror and plead for a swift death. Aurora begins muttering an unholy litany in broken gothic. Willpower test succeeded. You cannot make out her blasphemous words, but the name the heretic keeps repeating, the edge of daybreak, digs into your hearing like a blade into defenseless flesh. Its sound, uh, its sound is almost physically painful. It spawns uh, strange and impossible phantoms in your mind. However, you manage to muster your strength and banish it from your mind. I'll make an example out of you. Are okay. you ready to die? Okay, good. We can save here. That's good, because we need to end this episode right here. All right. All right. Well, we are going to pick up here in the next episode and do this fight. Looks like she's got a shield on her. So we'll probably have to do something to clear that shield. Bunch of enemies over here. I'm assuming it's the same on this side. Sure is. Okay. All right. Three and three. That might be what we do, actually. But we're going to figure that out in the next one. So thank you all for being here. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And I'll see you all in the next episode. Have a good one, everybody. Bye. I'd like to give a very special shout out to my patron supporters, Darren York, ZTD, Knife Namase, Kyle the Monarch, Chris Murphy, JW, Quinless, Vlada 101, Andy Ford, Bruce Wizzle, Black Mamba 90, Eureka Gecko, A Happy Fat Panda, Turkeyfoot 27, Pedo Kuto, Shadow Raven, and Nadia N. If you would also like to join this tier or any others, check out my memberships or my Patreon in the description down below.